Welcome back movie buffs, and contrary to popular opinion, not all sequels suck. In this video, we're gonna talk about 10 excellent movies that also have superb sequels available on Netflix. It's gonna be 10 pairings, that's 20 movies for those of you with your shoes on, and I've got a handful of honorable mentions bringing the tally to almost 30 movies currently included with Netflix. This video is sponsored by Vessi. We'll talk more about them later in the video. Right now, let's talk about my number 10 pairing, Creep 1 and 2. These have quickly turned into cult classic horror movies, and for the uninitiated, these are found footage, but they're done in a pretty unique style, even though it's a very, very simple one. In both of these movies, video journalists of sorts decide to follow a very interesting person played by Mark Duplass, and he's beyond interesting. He's really strange, and that's really all <laughs> these movies are. Like I said, very basic, but his performance is incredible, and both of these movies do a little bit of a tightrope walk where they're a little silly, but also very chilling at the same time, giving them a completely unique flavor. So if you're the least bit interested in that setup, then these are gonna make really cool flicks, but don't expect too much from them. Now, I've got some real bangers on this list, but my next two pairings are the only Netflix original movies included with this particular list. My next pick being Extraction. Now, these are the action movies starring Chris Hemsworth on Netflix, and they were surprisingly good to me, particularly the first one. I do feel like the second, it really goes for it, which earns big points for me, but the over-the-top nature of part two ended up making it a little bit sillier than the first one, which I didn't totally appreciate. That said, the first one has some brutal brawls in it and some pretty cool filmmaking where several sequences are filmed as one shot. They're imperfect, but both of these movies are pretty rough around the edges and that's something else I appreciated about them. Now, I have more than action movies on this list, but I do rank them according to how strongly I recommend them. And my next two pairings are some of the most balls to the wall action movies you can catch on Netflix. My number eight pick on this list being Lost Bullet one and two. Now these are action movies from France, but Netflix has done an incredible job dubbing them if you're not in the mood for subtitles when you decide to watch these. The best way I could describe these is it's kind of a mashup between Fast and the Furious and classic action movies. Movies like The Mechanic with Charles Bronson. But I actually like these better than Fast and the Furious because the main character is actually played by a stuntman who is doing all of his own stunts. Say what you will about Tom Cruise doing his own stunts, but Alban Lenore is actually the main character in both movies, and he's doing all of the fighting, all of the driving. Even when cars are crashing and on fire, he is behind the wheel, and he does a pretty good job acting in the movie as well. Just like Extraction, I feel like the second movie here gets a little bit too wonky for my taste, but only just a little. Meaning I loved the first one and obviously liked the second enough to include it here on this list. But I say that to say that my next pick, I far prefer the sequel to the original Crank. They gave you the Beijing cocktail. It's cutting off your adrenaline. If you stop, you die. Now don't get me wrong, I love Crank starring Jason Statham. It is a wild, fun, over-the-top action movie that makes a bunch of bold choices and just doesn't really care what the audience thinks. It just has fun being a wild action movie. Crank 2 took that same concept and just dialed it up to 11. The camera work in Crank 2 is almost nauseating, but the pace of that movie just keeps clocking along and you can tell Jason Statham and really everybody else for that matter, is having a lot of fun on screen. Now he does in a lot of his movies, but not always. Crank, however, is just kind of a fun house of a movie. And it's down, it's dirty, it's raunchy, it's violent, it's bloody, and man, does it really go for it by the end of the movie. So much so that I am sorely disappointed we didn't get a third installment out of this series. I think it could have been so cool based on where they were headed with it. That said, still makes for a really fun watch. I highly recommend both movies. Again, if you love just bonkers action movies. If that's not you, you like your stuff a little bit glossier and more refined, trust me, I promise I have more than action on the list, but my next pairing is actually Star Trek and Star Trek Into Darkness. 
Again, with this one, I far prefer the first one. I thought this was actually a really incredible way to bring Star Trek back to the big screen when this movie came out. Even if J.J. Abrams went absolutely apeshit with all of the lens flares, it's too much in the movie, but it still does make for a really cool look, and there's plenty of great sequences in the original Star Trek. I loved Benedict Cumberbatch's character of Khan in Into Darkness, but felt like the entire movie was not as well glued together as the first. Speaking of things that are put together well, it's a great time to mention today's sponsor, Vessi. Now, there are few things in this world worse than wet socks. They really are a day ruiner, but these are my new Vessis and these are my old ones. And the great thing about Vessis is they're 100% waterproof and they look like sneakers. These are brand new. I've only worn them out once. These I've worn for a year. Anytime it's wet outside, not only do I get compliments on them all the time, but water literally cannot penetrate these shoes. Here's a quick example with my brand new Vessis. As you can see, I hosed them down and my socks are completely dry. It's actually pretty amazing. And both of these are just super comfortable. They slip on and off easy. They are the perfect shoes to have by the door. Vessi's come in a bunch of different styles and colors. And the ones that I have, I think look great with shorts or with long pants like jeans. To get a deal on yours, go to Vessi.com slash FlickCon and use my code FlickCon and you're gonna get 15% off your first pair of Vessi's. I really do love my Vessi's. I highly recommend getting a pair. Again, to get that 15% deal, go to Vessi.com slash FlickCon or just use the link in the video description. Don't forget to use my code FlickCon to get that 15% deal. But speaking of great stuff, let's talk about the rest of the movies on this list. I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Cannonball! That's right, Anchorman 1 and 2 are included with Netflix. I mean, Anchorman has developed into one of the most classic movies from a 90s SNL alumni. All of the humor holds up in it so well because none of it's topical. I did feel like Anchorman 2 was just silly for the sake of being silly, whereas Anchorman 1 has just really stood the test of time. But if you're in the mood for a laugh, you'd be hard pressed to do much better than Anchorman on Netflix right now. Two years since I've seen home. Two years. But that leads me to my number four pick, which is not a movie. Believe it or not, Netflix has just recently added Band of Brothers and The Pacific. Two amazing original series produced by HBO, but also produced and directed by Steven Spielberg, Tom Hanks. This project came along not too long after the release of Saving Private Ryan. And for something that was made for TV, the original Band of Brothers is an amazing series. Both series only feature one season of 10 episodes, but each episode is almost like its own movie. I know a lot of people say that about the current state of TV, and it's kind of true, but not as much as it is with Band of Brothers. The, both of these miniseries stand out as some of the best television ever made, and they've never been on Netflix before. So if you have any kind of affinity for anything related to World War II, I cannot recommend both of these enough. That's 20 hours of content I just recommended for you. If you like getting movie recommendations like this, let the algorithm know by clicking the like button, maybe even the subscribe button. It's a great way to let YouTube know what kind of content you'd like to see again. Now, before moving on to the top three, I'm gonna bang through some honorable mentions. These are not sequels, but these are great double features also included with Netflix right now, starting with another World War II pairing, U571 and The Imitation Game. The reason I paired these two together is U571 is an excellent submarine movie, but in that movie, they're actually trying to steal an Enigma machine, which was the Nazis' coding machine. And then the imitation game is how scientists and engineers used that machine to break the Nazis' code and ultimately developed the first modern computer. Michael Mann's Heat is one of my all-time favorite movies. I cannot recommend it enough. It's easily like in my top five, but Michael Mann's Collateral is also included, and those two make a great pairing. They're fairly different, but they have a very similar style and aesthetic. Michael Mann also directed Public Enemies, currently included with Netflix. Johnny Depp plays John Dillinger. 
but I would actually pair that up with John Hillcoat's Lawless, which takes place in a similar time period, except here, instead of bank robbers, you're dealing with moonshine runners. Tom Hardy's excellent in the movie. Jessica Chastain, Shia LaBeouf is amazing. Guy Pierce. this is an incredible moonshine runner movie, one of the best released this century. And then they've also got Quentin Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs and The Hateful Eight, which make an amazing pairing. Reservoir Dogs obviously being his first film, but The Hateful Eight being very similar in its setup and delivery. <laughs> Start to see pictures, ain't you? But let's move on to my top three picks on this list. My number three pick being two of the most amazing action movies released in the 21st century so far. That is not an exaggeration. The Raid Redemption and The Raid 2 Berendahl. Both of these movies feature a brand new style of action. Most of it is fighting, but the choreography is done in such a way that it feels incredibly real. In fact, People got hurt making both of these movies because a lot of the punches you're seeing are really connecting. Now obviously they are using special effects in a lot of cases, but there's also plenty of cases in both movies where they're just going as hard as they can go and you can tell when you watch it. Not only that, the director, Gareth Evans, has a real affinity for classic action movies, and some of that comes across in both of these while still feeling brand new and fresh. Now, I will warn you, these are violent, bloody movies, but the action sequences in them are completely unparalleled, and they're unrelenting, especially in The Raid 2. The action just keeps going almost to the point of exhaustion and the Raid 2 actually ends up being a pretty killer gangster flick as well. I cannot recommend these enough for action movie lovers. If you've somehow missed either film, please make sure you catch it before they're gone. Now, my number two pick ends up featuring one of what I consider to be the greatest movies ever made, Jaws. Now I'm going to talk mostly about the original Jaws because it is such an incredible movie. Even to this day, it holds up better than most. And Jaws 2 is a pretty decent sequel, but I will say it's maybe one of the weaker sequels on this particular list, which is why Jaws didn't earn the number one spot. And Netflix also has Jaws 3 and 4, which are really both pretty terrible. Yet the original, you could split into two parts. There's all of the stuff leading up to them going out on the Orca the shark attacks that happen mostly at the beach. All of that is fantastic. It almost plays out kind of like a mystery movie. And then when they go out on the Orca to find it, the movie completely changes, the tone is different, and I love that part even more. If it's been a while since you've seen it and you just think, well, I'm not gonna put on Jaws, I've seen it, it's, it's in my memory bank, I'm telling you, it is still to this day a fantastic cinematic experience. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Topped only by my number one pairing on this list, Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. Now I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna nerd out here on you a little bit. One of the most exciting moments of my life was watching the opening shots of The Dark Knight. I loved Batman Begins, could not wait to see The Dark Knight and what Heath Ledger was doing as the Joker. Still to this day, blown away by The Dark Knight, but have only just recently revisited Batman Begins, and I'd forgotten how much I loved that one as well. Not only was it just a good Christopher Nolan movie, but I absolutely loved the approach. It is a superhero movie, things are plenty far-fetched, but the approach to Batman Begins made it feel pretty authentic and realistic, or at least the concept of him becoming like this ninja made sense. I mean, the way he goes about acquiring all his gear, his origin story is so strong with Batman Begins, but it's also really well written. For instance, Michael Caine has one line that does a beautiful and elegant job of setting up all of Alfred's motivations for helping Bruce, but Heath Ledger's Joker performance, every scene that he's in, not only does he steal it, it's one of the greatest performances of all time. He doesn't do anything that you would expect. It works so well for the character and it's just a thoroughly entertaining movie to watch from beginning to end. Easily one of my favorites of all time, which is why it makes the number one spot. 
Let me know if there's anything else you would have added on to this list. Don't forget the full list can be found in the top pinned comment down below. Thanks again to Vessi for sponsoring another video. Don't forget to go check out their link in the video description, but I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special Netflix episode and you will see me on the next one.